My hand, Kyburn, has made overtures to the Golden Company in Essos. I know them well. They have helped us recover significant sums from parties who had fallen into deep arrears. That's good to hear. I too would like them to recover some things that belong to me. In light of the fact that sellsword companies are going to potentially play a major role in the 8th season of Game of Thrones, I thought this would be a great topic to start this new video series. Sadly, we haven't really met the Golden Company yet in the show, so we will have to discuss the next best thing. The Second Sons. And the Stormcrows, because you really can't have one without the other. So let's have a look at how both the show and the books have differed in the way that they have presented this aspect of the story and let you decide who did it better, George or David and Dan. You're now watching Because Geek. The history behind these sellsword companies is about the same in both the books and the show, but we start to see a lot of small changes from the moment that they are first officially introduced in the story. The manner of their introduction is the same. In both the books and the show, they are sellsword companies that have been hired by the wise masters of Yunkai to defend their city after hearing that Daenerys had successfully defeated Astapor and freed their slaves. Daenerys, as usual, wants to avoid as much bloodshed as possible, so even though she would probably have the upper hand in this fight, she decides to parlay before attacking. In both the book and the show, Danny speaks with an envoy from the Wise Masters and with the captains from the Sellsword Companies. You can find a bunch of insignificant small differences between the two here, like name changes or lines set by one character in the books given to a different character in the show, that sort of thing. What we want to focus on though is the major changes, the ones that made a difference, and one of these was the merging of the Second Sons and the Stormcrows. Remember how I said that you can't have one without the other? This is what I meant. In the books, George had the Yunkai hire both the Second Sons and the Stormcrows, while in the show, David and Dan had the Yunkai hire only the Second Sons, who had members that were Stormcrows in the books. I will explain that further in a bit, but first let me tell you that their numbers were a bit different as well. In the books, each of the companies had 500 cavalry, giving them a total of 1000, but in the show, even though the Stormcrows aren't even in this scene, the Second Sons alone have 2,000 armored horses. That's a big change. The Second Sons are definitely more powerful in the show, but they still got a long way to go before they beat the Golden Company. 20,000 men, horses, elephants, I believe. The other major change is the captains of these companies. In the books, Mero is the only captain of the Second Sons that comes to see Danny. And the company that brings three captains is the Stormcrows, who are Prendel Nagesen, Salor the Bald, and Dario Naharis. He's not a captain, he's a lieutenant. Uh, yeah, sorry, lieutenant. Dario is only a lieutenant. For now. In the show, Salor the Bald has been entirely removed, and Prendel and Dario are now captain and lieutenant for the Second Sons with Mero. In the show, Dario kills the two Second Sons captains, Mero and Prendel. And since there is only one sellsword company, this is all that Danny needed in the show. Now, in the books, Dario does this for Danny as well. He kills the two captains, Prendel and Sauler, but this only gives Danny the Stormcrows. She still needs the second sons. So, in the books, George had to come up with another solution. He decided to have Danny think of a clever plan on the spot. When she asks Mero to give her an answer on the morrow, instead of agreeing, Mero asks if he can have a flagon of wine. She then increases her offer and says that he can have a cask because she has wagons full of them from Astapor. When he hears this, he bites the bait and asks for a whole wagon instead. Somewhere along the process of this negotiation, Danny realizes that she can use this to her advantage. She gives him the full wagon if he promises to drink to her health. He does promise to do so, and as Danny predicted, once the battle took place that same night, Mero and his captains were too drunk to fight and were easily defeated, giving her control over his second sons. The line about the wine was also included in the show, but with a slight change. You seem to be enjoying my wine. Perhaps you'd like a flagon to help you ponder. In the show, Danny offers Mero wine, while in the books, as you saw, it is Mero who asks Danny for wine. What this means is that in the show they make it seem like Danny came up with this clever idea by paying attention to what was going on around her. She picked up on the fact that Mero was drinking a lot of wine 
and probably thought that it would be beneficial to give him more wine and get him drunk. While in the books, Danny comes up with this idea only after Mero triggers it verbally. So, which Danny strategic mind do you prefer? Now, to be fair, the drunkness of Mero does not seem to have played a role in the show. They either added that line in there because they needed a bit more conversation in the scene, or the payoff for the wine strategy got lost in the editing. Who knows? What we do know is that Dario's strange and morbid way to be chivalrous also happened in both book and show albeit slightly differently. Both George and David and Dan make him kill and cut off the heads of the other two captains in his company. Like I mentioned already in the books, it's the Stormcrows, and in the show, it's the Second Sons. Then he sneaks into Danny's camp with their heads in a bag as a present to Danny. But this is where things change. In the show, he steals an unsullied armor, sneaks past everyone without a problem, holds a dagger to Missandei's throat so that Danny doesn't yell for help, and nobody else is there. Now, in the books, he actually gets caught. He's still wearing his flamboyant outfit instead of stealing an unsolid armor, which is probably why he got caught. And Jora is the one who brings him to Danny. So let's look at the actual differences here. You could say that the books went with a more believable plot. Danny's own tent should be heavily guarded, so it's a bit hard to believe that Dario could sneak past all of her guards without a problem. But having Dario steal the unsolid armor wasn't that bad of an idea to make this work in the show. Keep in mind though that it's possible that book Dario got himself caught on purpose, because he knew that would be the easiest way to get to Danny. I would say that this is one of those occasions where the change between the two events was the perfect change to make. They are both the exact same event with the exact same result, but in the show there's surprise, suspense and action behind it. It happens quick and to the point, which is great for TV. In the case of the books, it makes more sense for it to happen in a more slow yet more realistic manner, while also being able to involve as many characters as George pleased. There are a lot of small differences in the way that Dario interacts with Danny here, but I'm trying to keep this video more focused on the sellsword companies rather than one single individual, and Dario could easily have one whole video to himself. I will say though that in the books, Dario says a lot more in this scene, and we learn through his words how much of a badass he is. In the show, we learn this through his actions more than his words. Also in the show, nothing happens to the heads after they're revealed. While in the books, Danny's dragons make a late night meal out of them, right in front of Dario. But that one is just one of those changes tied to the CGI budget limitations. Another aspect that was the same in both the book and the show is that Dario ends up pledging his sword, his life, his heart and everything to Danny, and helps her defeat Yunkai. In the books, it's Danny who comes up with the entire plan of attack, while in the show, they gave that idea to Dario. I kill the gods. I take your two best men and lead them through the back streets, which I know well, and open the front gates. Then comes the army. The taking of Yunkai happens very quickly and without much detail in the books. It basically happens off screen and we hear the results through Jorah after the battle is done. In the show, they actually made a whole sequence of scenes out of it. We get to see Dario, Jorah and Grey Worm infiltrate the city and we get to see them slashing all of the Yunkai slave guards before reporting back to Danny all bathed in blood. The city is yours, my queen. After all of this, in the show, Dario is the new captain and representative of the whole sellsword force pledged to Danny while in the books, he's only the new captain of the Stormcrows. It was actually Brown Ben Plum, a book-only character, who was chosen as the new captain for the Second Sons after Mero fled the battle. Because, yeah, Mero didn't die fighting, he just fled. This actually causes a whole other chain of events in the books. In a later chapter, Mero tries to assassinate Danny, but before he gets a chance, he gets killed by Sir Barristan, who was in disguise. So Mero was actually used as a plot device to reveal Barristan's true identity, but this of course wasn't needed in the show. Now, back to Brown Ben Plum for a little bit, he had no real replacement in the show. In the books, we first meet him when Danny reaches the city of Marine and is received by their champion. Brown Ben Plum is the one who fills her in on the history of this champion, since he used to work for his uncle. And it is also Brown Ben Plum who suggests the possibility of taking Marine through the sewers. While in the show, we don't really know who came up with this idea. You'll have to continue later. 
It's time. The two stories begin to differ a lot from this point forward. In the show, the second sons sort of disappear. The only member of the company that continues to be shown on screen is Dario, and when he's not sleeping with Danny, he communicates to us what the second sons have been up to. <coughs> the second sons took the Marinese Navy. Who told you to take the Navy? No one. In both the show and the books, the masters retake the city of Yunkai after Danny takes Marine. And in the show, they keep the storyline very much simplified. The second son stay in Marine to patrol the streets, while Danny sends his Dar Zolorak and Dario to negotiate with the masters of Yunkai, which actually turns out to be a successful mission. Once Dario is back, he remains in Marine for the rest of the story, and with his second sons and the Unsullied, he helps Danny fight off the Sons of the Harpy. In the books, the plot is so incredibly complex that I'm not surprised it wasn't included in the show. You see, in the books, Danny has more than one Salsor company at her disposal, which becomes very useful when she finds herself having to deal with a variety of unexpected issues coming at her from all directions. She does not immediately negotiate with the Yunkish, but instead she sends the second son south to guard against their incursions, because they have been slowly becoming more and more of a threat to Marine. Then she sends Dario and the Stormcrows north to convince the Lazarine to reopen the trade routes, because everyone is going to starve in Marine if they don't. When Dario gets there, he has to fight a Salsor company hired by the Yunkai called the Long Lances, and he gains a few new Stormcrows after defeating them. There's a lot of back and forth after this, Dario comes back to Marine, Danny gets angry with him and sends him north again, then she calls the Stormcrows and the Second Sons back to Marine, only to send them south again, and this is around the time when the Second Sons ultimately turn on her and join the Yunkai. And that starts a whole other interesting storyline that involves Tyrion and Jorah, who end up joining the Second Sons. But the storylines don't even stop there. There is another book-only character called Quentin Martell, who is the son of Doran Martell and Prince of Dorne, who manages to switch from one Salsor company to another, all throughout Essos, with a few companions in disguise, until he finally ends up joining the Stormcrows. All just so that they could meet Danny in person to give her an important message that I won't get into here. Just know that it's complicated. Eventually, Marine finds itself under siege by the Yunkish, and during negotiations, Dario gets sent to them as a hostage, which means that the Stormcrows have a new temporary leader. Then Danny begins to plot how to assassinate Brown Ben Plum for his betrayal, but unbeknownst to her, Tyrion is already planning on working his magic to convince him to switch back to her side. There is even more to say, but I should really stop here because there is so much more complexity in Danny's marine chapters compared to the show that it's just not worth mentioning in this comparison video. The important difference to think about is what type of story do you like best? And once you've made up your mind, let me know who you think did it best by picking a winner in the poll that's popping up in the corner right now. You can also leave all of your opinions and feedback in the comment section below, I will read every single comment. And now I just want to give a huge shout out to every single person who helped me out with this video, starting off with Goose. Hey. Yeah, that's him. Uh, he's a graphic designer who has just joined the Because Geek team and he made all the awesome graphics for this video. And another huge shout out to my Patreons for making this video possible, including Aaron Dickinson and Jay Crook who helped out with the script and research. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, leave a like if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one! <laughs>